Hello, in this lecture we're going to continue on with the master budget. We're going to move on to the selling expense budget here. Now, let's take a look at the process real quick. We do need to go in order in this case. We started off with the sales budget. We need to do the sales budget before we can do anything basically in the budgeting process. Then we looked at the production budget. How many things are we going to need to produce? How many units do we need to produce in order to meet the sales? And that would allow us to think about how much stuff we need to purchase in terms of raw material and how much we're going to need to pay in terms of uh, wages, which are probably the largest two expense if we are manufacturing stuff. Then we had the factory overhead, which included a variable and fixed portion. And now we're moving down here. These are kind of more the miscellaneous type of budgets, and they'll be different depending on the type of industry that we are in. We will generally have some type of selling uh, expenses, and it just depends on how uh, we incur those selling expenses in different types of companies. So we're gonna have to look at the problem and see what we have in there. In this case, we have a sales commission for part of our selling expenses. And it says here that the sales commission is 9% of sales. So sales commission uh, percent of sales paid. So what that's trying to say here is that we are going to pay sales commission at 9% of the sales. Therefore, we're gonna start off with the budgeted sales. And we're going to get that amount from the, the sales budget, obviously, which we did all the way up top. So within July, I'm going to select equals, and I'm going to scroll all the way up to where we did the sales budget and point to that number. So we're going to scroll all the way up to the top, and I'm looking for the sales budget. Here's the sales budget. Here's July. And so it's over here on the 494.4. This is dollars, not units. So this is the dollar sales. That's what we're going to calculate the commission on. I'm going to select tab. Now we are in August. I'm going to do the same thing for August. So we, we want the sales numbers from the sales budget. So I'm going to scroll all the way up. I'm going to hit equals first. Then I'm going to scroll all the way up to the top. And we're going to go to the sales for August, which is in dollars for 7400 And then we'll do the same thing for September. So we're going to say the, this equals, scroll all the way up to the sales budget, and we're looking for that 424. All right, so we've adjusted this to put the dollar sign in there so we can see that we are talking about dollars here and, and there's always we always want to keep that straight when we're going through the budget when are we talking about dollars when are we talking about units okay so now we're going to multiply that times the sales commission percent and we're going to give a nine percent sales commission so nine percent all the way across for july august and september we can then calculate that out so that means that if we had sales in july of 494.4 times 9% sales commission, we're going to pay sales commission of 44,496. Same thing for August, we're going to say 4,490 times the 9% and tab. Also note that the 9% is a percent, of course, because of the formatting of the sales, meaning if you go to the home tab and the numbers group and you want to hit the percent sign if you want it in the format of a percent. Otherwise, you can just type in 0 0.02. Also note that you want to have the decimals where they should be uh, in order to display the amount of decimals that you would like to see. So then we're going to September, we're going to say this equals the uh, sales 4924 times the percent of 9%. So that gives us the sales commission and we have some more blank space. So I'm assuming we have some other stuff related to sales. So we're going to have to go down here and what we're looking for in the materials is, you know, what stuff is related to sales versus, you know, the administrative type of information. So commission, of course, would be a sales type of activity. We can also see down here that we have a sales manager monthly salary. So obviously anything that says sales in it is probably going to be somewhere in the sales budget. This is going to be a, a, a fixed cost in nature and that it doesn't change from month to month. So July, we're still going to pay that. Supervisors, 3-5, three, 3-5 five, three, five for August, 3-5 for September. Therefore, we can now, that's all that we have in terms of sales, stuff that says sales in it in our information. So we can add this up. So we're going to say July, we have the 44 commission. 44,496 plus the 3,005 of the salaries gives us a total sales of the 47,996. And we're going to multiply this out as well through August. This uh, plus this, I should say, tab. And then September equals the commission plus the salaries and enter. Also note once again that this could be have some rounding in it, meaning if I go to the home tab, numbers group, and I increase the in decimals, this one came out, I happened to come out or even. But just be aware that uh, it, it is possible that uh, we could have some decimals there because we're talking about a budget. Uh, I'm very happy to just round it to the nearest dollar because pennies will not be generally material to decision making. So now we're going to move on to the general and administrative expenses. 
And once again, this will be kind of like the miscellaneous stuff that you'll pick up in the prom. So anything that we haven't picked up yet that uh, is is not in the selling is probably part of the uh, general and administrative expenses. And so we're going to have here, in this case, if we take a look at this, we have salaries of administrative salaries of 11000 So that's going to be in the, uh, you know, the, the office, the accounting department being included in there. So we'll just have salaries for the uh, administrative salaries, 11000 It's a fixed cost, so we're just going to put 11000 all the way across for July, August, and September. And we could total that up for the quarter, summing the July, August, and September, and enter. All right, and then we also have this loan on the books as well. So we're going to group that into the selling and, uh, I mean, into the general administrative type expenses. So the loan is on the books at, we can see the 500000 long-term note. So we're going to put the long-term note in this section as well for our budgeting. And we can see that we have an interest on it. We're not going to put the loan. We're going to put the interest on the loan. And then so we have the long-term uh, monthly interest that we're going to pay. And we've, this problem has simplified it down. So we're going to take the monthly interest rate. Uh, if you see a problem that gives you the, you know, the yearly interest rate, then of course you would have to break it down to a monthly rate. So we're, we've already broken down the rate, meaning we took the yearly rate, basically divided by 12, and just given the monthly rate, which is uh, 1% here. So we're going to take the uh, interest on long term note, which equals that 500 thousand times 0 0.01 so remember that uh, obviously we moved the decimal over two places 0 0.01 equals and we can do that all the way across we could copy it 500 thousand times 0 0.01 it's going to be 5,000 again equals the 500 thousand times 0 0.01 and then we could of course sum that up equals the sum of 5,000 5,000 5,000 July August September gives us the 15. So we're just going to add those two up, and that'll give us our total expenses here. So we're going to say this equals the 11 plus the 5, tab August equals the 11 plus the 5, tab, and September equals the 11 plus the 5, tab. We could sum this up two ways. We could say the total equals the total for the quarter plus the total for the quarter, or we can check that number by highlighting these three, July, August, September, gives us the 48,000. That is our total expenses okay so now let's move on to calculating part of the cash budget now when we start thinking about cash we're gonna to have to break down the idea of when we make a sale are we gonna collect all the cash when we sell it or are we gonna collect the cash afterwards at, at some point in the future and in, in when, when we think about our cash flow budget that's gonna be important obviously so that's what we're gonna basically break down and we're gonna use in uh, our, our cash flow budgeting as we go. So let's take a look at what basically our problem says here. It's saying that of our sales, we're going to sell 30% uh, for cash. So we're going to collect the cash at the point of sale in the same month. And then we're going to say that 70% uh, is going to be sold on credit. And we're going to say that the stuff that was sold on credit, we are going to collect that cash uh, in the following month. So taking those into consideration let's think about what the cash flow would be projected to look like we're going to start with the total budgeted sales again so we're going to say what was our sales for july both cash and uh, on account and we're going to get that from our sales budget so in july i'm going to hit equals i'm going to scroll all the way up to the top again scroll all the way up to the top and here's our sales budget for july we're going to sell 494 four dollars and that's what we're going to that's what we're going to collect in well, that's how much we're selling in dollars units, but of course we're not going to collect it all in dollars yet. And then in August, we're going to say this equals, and we're going to scroll all the way up to our sales budget again, and we're looking for August, August in dollars, 47400 tab, and September, we're going to say September, scrolling all the way up to our sales budget, we're going to sell 482.4. So again, we're measuring that in dollars, but we are... I have not yet collected all the money yet. Some of it was sold on account. Some of it was sold for cash. More specifically, we're going to have cash sales of 30% and sales on credit 70%. So let's just first break that out and see what that looks like. So we're going to say that, of course, in July, we had total sales uh, 494.4 times 0.3 or 
enter. And then I'm going to say on credit for July, we had the 494.4 times 0 0.7, 70%, enter. And that's how the breakout's going to be. So that's the, the 494.4. I'm not talking about how much cash we've received yet. We'll do that next time. All we're doing here is saying, here's the total sales. Uh, here's the portion of it that is going to be on for cash. Here's the proportion of it that will be for credit. So we know that we're going to collect this in July, of course, and we're going to have to determine when we collect this uh, based on the, the problem, what the problem gives us. And in this case, we're going to collect it all in the following month in August. And we'll take a look at that next time. So in August, we're going to say total sales of 474 times, we're going to say 0.3 or 30% in um, will be for cash equals the 47400 times 0.70%, which will be on credit. And of course, those two again add up to the 47400. You can do the same thing for, for September. You could copy the formula across, of course, but we'll calculate this so that we can see it. So we have the sales times 0.3 for cash. And then we're going to say this equals the sales times 0.7. That's the amount that we're going to sell on credit. So now we're going to use that information to try to think about our cash flows. So now we're going to think of our cash receipts. And if we think of our cash receipts, of course, the, the, the amount in July that we sold for cash, we're, of course, going to receive in July. So of the sales that we sold for cash, the 30%, we're just going to say, yeah, obviously this... Uh, 148.3 is going to come in. I can copy that across, but in August, we're going to say this 141.120 that we uh, sold for cash in August. We're obviously going to get the cash in August. That's going to be the cash flow. In September, we're going to say that's obviously the, the sales that we made in September for cash. We're going to receive the cash on that. Then we have collections of receivables. Let's just call it AR. So th this is going to be the amounts that we sold on account, but then we're going to get the cash in the following month. And again, you could have some problems that are more complex than this that would say that we get some of the money in the next month and some of the money in the following month and not have all the money collected in the following month. But just remember that you're going to have some type of timing difference, meaning that if we sold, for example, in July, this 148.320 on account, we didn't get the cash at the point of sale. We're going to have to get the cash sometime later. So for the cash flow budget in this problem, we're saying that we're making all of the collection in the following month. So if we made the sale this month, we're going to collect it in the following month. That again, that could be a fairly simplified model. It could be simplified. That could be a good thing to do for budgeting in a simplified model. Uh, and or we could have you know some more complex models saying that we're going to get 30% next month or 50% next month and then you know, 50% in the following month or something like that. But in this case, we're going to say for August, I can say that this equals the uh, sales that were on account, I'm sorry, on account in July. So if we made it on account in July, we're going to collect it in August. In September, we're going to say that this equals the AR collections, the cash we're going to collect from the accounts receivable is going to be in September, the amount that we sold on account in August. And then, of course, we have this same kind of issue. Well, where does July come from? Because I'm only looking at the quarter and I don't uh, see uh, anything before July. So, And, of course, where do we have the information before July? If we scroll up to the balance sheet, we would say in the accounts receivable, we currently have 342-248. That's going to be the number that we're going to use because that's as of 630. We're going to collect that in July then. So in July, we're going to collect we got from the balance sheet the um, 342.248. Therefore, we have a total of equals the cash that we're going to receive for the sales that were sold on for cash in July, plus the AR that we're going to receive for sales that happened in the prior month. In August, we're going to equals, and of course you can copy this across, we're going to get the cash from the cash sales that we made in August, plus the cash that we're going to receive from the accounts receivable for the sales that happened in July on account, 70%. And then in September, we're going to have the, the cash received from the sales that happened in September, plus, of course, the sales that were made on account for August. And that will give us the total cash received 
like so. And we're going to use this information to create next time our cash budget.